So thanks for everybody for coming along once again, and thanks once again for all works for hosting us tonight. That was very good. We were struggling for space in a lot of places, so it was incredibly simple. So we got everybody in the room then. Okay, so this is just a funny slide to begin things. Uh, there's no particular rhyme or reason behind it. It was just a pretty funny slide about PowerPoints. Um, so basically, I'm just going to talk about some recent changes. And um, here's another funny slide that doesn't really come into any context. But uh, just around stuff that we're doing at 3.3 and some other versions, just to like gain more traction in the whole big data area, and uh, not just in finance, but in, in other industries as well. Um, so basically what I want to do is I want to do a quick recap of version 3.3 because we didn't quite cover the user group meeting back in April um, and it kind of went live then in about June. Um, so I just wanted to go over some um, simple stuff. Um, most of you probably know this already but I just want to make sure it gets inside everybody's head and hopefully you know, gives you more of a compulsion to actually upgrade to version 3.3. Um, so one of the first ones is um, the new function reval or minus 24 band. Um, so that's read-only evaluation. So essentially what it will do is you can put it inside the message handlers and just say evaluate it um, as if it's the minus B zero flag is always on. So then you can have like a super user who just has regular access and then just every other near mortal has email access. Um, so that's proven um, quite popular. It should make things um, a bit better from an access and authentication um, viewpoint. And then the next one then is just stuff like average sum by distinct defined. That's better about 10 times if you're, uh, specifically if you're working uh, with G and H, so um, fluid and short integer. And that was actually brought about by um, Nataraj and Sear, who so was um, telling us that R was better than KU plus at that, so that, you know, obviously it always matters. Sort of just <laughs> 10 times, that's all you have to do with him. Um, so then another thing is um, we reintroduced the capability to and be allowed to create the G attribute in thread processes, or, or and threads rather. And previously that was taken out in version 3.2. I can't remember why exactly, but it's been reintroduced again so you can apply the G attribute within a thread. And there's other smaller stuff as well. So there's faster on disk sort for on cache displays. If you're just doing a reorder of the data on disk, and it will just be sped up. <coughs> um, and there's also two new um, callbacks, so there's .zf.wo and .zf.wc specific for opening and closing the web socket connection. Um, and then one of the main things in 3.3 really is JSON. Um, we already had it in 3.2 via j.k, but now it's directly implemented inside and the executable itself directly in C code. So it's about 50 to 100 times faster. Um, and it has a lot stricter parsing, and you can do stuff like you know load table.json and save table.json like, like you can with CSV files already. And um, it has Unicode support now as well, and then also you can go um, via the browser and just the HTTP host port and do .json in your query. Um, so that's um, proven pretty popular as well. And um, of course, you can always just use a binary format and be yeah. sensible rather than using JSON, but that's you know, for another day. Um, and then just to go back on a few things, um, obviously this didn't, didn't come into version 3.3, but these have been in like version 3.1 and 3.2, but we're quite surprised when we go around to meetings and we find that people aren't really using these capabilities and they're really, really cool and really, really fast. So we just kind of want to re-emphasize them again along with a funny graphic. Um, so the fact that we can now do pitch over multiple machines um, and processes and not just over like single threads taking advantage of cores on one machine. So that's quite, quite powerful. And how you do that is you basically um, use that handler .z.pd and you basically um, handle a unique list of um, connection handles. So those can be local connection handles or they can be remote connection handles. So you could have like a historical database set up, you know, shared over, shared nothing over several machines and you can really start, you know, blasting it out of the water. Um, so it's really, really cool. And then there's also .q.map, which will just map the entire database on startup. Um, and we did a POC about two years ago now where we used .q.map just when it came out. And we were running it on a fully SSD machine and it was absolutely fantastic. We just mapped the entire database and then we started running uh, multiple processes and the queries were just unbelievable. Um, we like beat another like, rack full of a machine like about a thousand times on almost every single query. So it's well worth um, taking a look at that if you haven't. Um, another nice thing you can do with that as well is a lot of the time what I do is when you have tiered storage and maybe like your last week of data on local fastest, then everything else is thrown out. 
on slower and compressed. I'll typically use .q.map with .q.view to just give it the last week's worth of data, and then it can give a really recent um, historical fast database for people that only care about the last week's worth of data. So that works really cool on that as well. And um, there's also minus 23 bang, which is just, um, you can just put that before a query and it will just map the data without actually loading it in. So you can just prepare it for when you're loading it in on demand later. Um, and then there's some new staff. Um, so we have hired Mark Sykes over in London. So a lot of you might know Mark. He's worked with several um, different banks using KB Plus over the years. And he has great you know, skills in terms of implementing high frequency rating systems built on top of KB Plus. So I believe his title is Global Market Strategist, and uh, he's going to be helping KX expand both within the finance domain but also in other industries as well, and he comes with great caliber. And then we have uh, this guy over here, this is somewhere in the room, there he is down at the back, um, Jamie O'Mahony, um, all the way from Cork, uh, Middleton just outside Cork. And um, so this is him in Chicago last week, you know, doing the most tourist thing on earth, just so we can put it on his Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> it worked though. Yeah. <laughs> so he's based in the New York City office with us, and he studied at UCC in Cork. And as he says so often, you know, you can't spell success without UCC. So. <laughs> Um, and this is just me in the office with some servers that we're playing around with. Um, we just want to kind of convey um, the effort that we're doing a lot of research and development and we're constantly trying to um, you know, make things faster. And I just wanted to show off my new sneakers as well. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know, on that point in terms of research and development, um, we recently just made 3.4T available. And so T is for test. Um, and I thought we thought this uh, the graphic might be good um, for Jeff Barr, seeing as he's going to be releasing q very soon. Um, so yeah, in, in terms of 3.4T, um, there's not too many additions yet. There's a small few things under the hood, but one of the most interesting features is now we um, have the ability to support um, Unix domain sockets. And um, so that just means that if you're doing, like, say, checker plant or CEP style work and um, TCP IP, you can use Unix domain sockets rather than just using native um, IPC. And typically, um, these are some queries that we ran actually on a client machine, and the client came back to us with these and performance improvements today. So you see for certain types of calculations, we're getting 50% performance improvements. So hopefully that will you know, drive down the latency in a lot of your calculations. So rather than doing backlit code on host and port, you just use backlit units and then the port. And obviously it's only for local to local, so it's perfect for something like a ticker plan style architecture with several different um, CEP engines running underneath. Um, so that's new, and that's been brought up to that. And then we're also have, having support for pipes as well, and we're going to try and improve that so you can start piping dir data directly in. So one simple example that we've been playing around with is actually just, say, unzipping the noisy TAC file directly into KV Plus rather than actually unzipping it and then loading it into KV Plus. So that will be an application that we're going to um, do a little bit more work on. And then there's some other minor little bits and pieces there, but it's available and we do recommend that people, you know, download it and test it and, you know, give us feedback. And also as well, we're kind of, you know, leaving it out there for people to, you know, suggest features, what you'd like implemented. Obviously, if you suggest making improvements to the debugger, we'll just laugh at you. Um, but, you know, every other suggestion will be gladly uh, received. Um, so, yeah, if you just want to talk to me afterwards or just send us an email, you know, we're kind of looking for people because it's the customers that drive the, you know, the new upgrades, etc. Uh, as we've seen with uh, Natarage with the 3.3 um, improvements. So. Um, then coming to um, a nice little announcement this evening is QODBC 3. Um, so it's going to be made available in the next couple of days. So it's basically, um, obviously the ODBC driver that we have already isn't compliant for ODBC version 3 and above. So now this will be made available, it will just be a W64.exe, you'll just install it. So meaning that it will be compatible with um, tools such as Excel and Tableau. I mean, obviously we already have Excel integration, but it just makes it uh, better, so, you know, ODBC 3 is just faster. And coming with that will be a new SQL par parser, P.K. Okay. I'm pretty sure it got called P.K. Okay because it was written by Pierre, so he's just taking the credit for it. And so that will just prove and give better SQL support. So if you're just writing native SQL queries rather than just using the s.k that's already there, we'll get further SQL support for that. So it's still kind of a work in progress. We're, we're gonna, we've tested it with a few customers already who use like Tableau, etc. And if you know, reported back, everything looks good. So we'll probably be releasing it. We thought we were gonna release it today, but it might even be up now. So if you go to kx.com slash q slash w64 and check if it's in there. Um, 
it will be part of this will be there sometime this week, you think anyway. <coughs> and then the final piece of news is KXCon 2016. And um, so we'll be having a conference. It will be somewhere in the New York, greater New York State area. Um, and will be likely in May of next year. And we'll be announcing more details. We've got a venue pretty much sorted. Um, I'm not going to tell you those in case of also know it's like an idiot. So. Um, <laughs> but we're going to you know, have a lot of speakers. It's going to be like a two, three day thing. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. We'll have a lot of activities as well. Um, We'll likely have Art there talking um, and a lot of cool speakers. And if anybody here is interested in speaking as well, or for that matter, speaking at any other meetup that we have, um, we'll be more than happy to hear from you. And I think that might be it for me. So we're now over to Connor from First Derivatives, who's going to talk about something that I forget what it is again. <laughs>